Hello, I am Pramod Kumar and uh, today we will study English for class 12, Bihar Board. Our book is Rainbow Part 2. Our poem is The Soldier. The name of our poem is The Soldier and it is written by Rupert Brooke. Was born in 1887 and uh, died in 1915 at the age of 28 only. Right? In this poem, the poet focuses on two major things. One is dangers of war, and second is his very very high sense of patriotism right isme wo yuddh ke jo khatre hain uske bare mein batate hain mainly aur apni deshbhakti ko darshate hain mainly two things uh, the poet himself was participating in war as a soldier and he was to go he was instructed to go away from the front line yeah yuddh chhetra se hat jaiye unko instruction mila tha but he said no he continued on the war front or unfortunately a insect bites him unko infection ho gaya aur unki बहुत कम एज में डेथ हो गई, राइट? सो दिस पोइम, द पोइट गिव्स एन एग्जांपल ऑफ द डेंजर्स ऑफ वर्ल्ड वार वन, वर्ल्ड वार वन, 1914 टू 1918, एंड दिस पोइम वाज रिटेन इन 1915, अर्ली स्टेज ऑफ वार, इट वाज रिटेन this poem is an example of dangers of World War I and comforting the survivors. This poem also gives a lot of comfort to the survivors of war and it downplays at the same time, it downplays the grim reality of war. What are the grim realities of war? The grim realities of war are War brings in its way death, injury, destruction, poverty, unemployment, जब युद्ध होता है, तो युद्ध के परिणाम स्वरूप क्या होता है? बहुत से लोगों की मौत होती है, बहुत से लोग घायल होते हैं, बहुत से संपत्ति की बर्बादी होती है। युद्ध के बाद गरीबी फैलती है, क्योंकि बर्बादी बहुत हुई होती है, बेरोजगारी फैलती है, और बहुत से युद्ध के बाद कई सोशल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर जो हैं, वो कोलैप्स कर जाते हैं सोशल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कोलैप्स कर जाते हैं जिनसे लोगों को मदद मिलती है वो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ड्यू टू ऑल दिस दे कोलैप्स सो इट ब्रिंग्स लॉट ऑफ मिजरी लॉट ऑफ पेन लॉट ऑफ एगोनी टू द वार अफेक्टेड पीपल सो when this poem was written, bodies of dead soldiers, there was a practice. Suppose an Indian soldier is fighting in Sudan and incidentally the Indian soldier dies there fighting. So during those days, the body of the dead soldier did not used to be brought to the home country, India. It used to be cremated somewhere near the battleground. So, 
when this poem was written 1915 bodies of dead soldiers used to be buried near the place where they died जहां वो युद्ध में लड़ते लड़ते उनकी मौत होती है सैनिकों की उसी के नजदीक कहीं पे उनको बरी कर दिया जाता था क्रिमेट कर दिया जाता था राइट दिस रिजल्टेड इन वेरी वास्ट एरिया इन फॉरेन लैंड विच वी आर फुल ऑफ ग्रेव यार्ड ऑफ ब्रिटिश सोल्जर्स दैट टाइम इवन ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम नाइनटीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन ब्रिटेन का साम्राज्य विश्व में एक बहुत लंबे स्तर पर था लंबे चौड़े स्तर पे ब्रिटिश सैनिक विश्व में बहुत जगह फैले हुए थे क्योंकि उनकी कॉलोनीज थी अलग अलग तो वहां वो अपनी संप्रभुता अपनी संप्रभुता अपनी वो क्या बोलते हैं ग्लोरी के लिए वो लड़ते रहते थे तो क्या होता था वट यूज टू हैपन मेनी ब्रिटिश सोल्जर्स यूज टू गेट किल्ड इन द बैटल अक्रॉस द ग्लोब इन सो मेनी कंट्रीज so their dead bodies did not used to be brought back to their homeland in england or britain they used to be buried there so there were very large tracts of land in foreign country foreign lands where graveyards of british soldiers were there dead british soldiers it resulted in vast graveyards of british soldiers in foreign fields foreign lands foreign countries in this poem the poet portrays this grave this graves ye jo grave hai inke jo asmasan inke liye banaye gaye hain jahan pe unko bari kiya gaya hai so the poet portrays these graves as represented representing a piece of the world a piece of the world that will be forever england piece of the world that will be forever england why forever england why forever england because on that piece of land under that piece of land a british soldier dead british soldier is buried so his dead body has become a part of the soil of that land so out of a very high sense of patriotism patriotism the poet says this the poet portrays these graves in various foreign lands where british dead british soldiers are buried as representing a piece of the world world ka ek tukda world ka tukda which represents which will be that will be forever england that part of uh, that piece of land will be forever england because a british soldier has been buried there and has become a part of that piece of land so this thing arises out of a very high sense of patriotism in the poet this bhakti ki bahut unchi bhavna se ye nikalta hai right the poet in the beginning of the war itself had made some guess rough guess that there will be very vast number of soldiers who will be killed in the world war and what did he think he thought that now wars are fought in a far more ferocious way through the use of lot of machinery and technology so the level of destruction will, will be very high as compared to what it used to be before so the poet had made some rough guess that a very large number of people will be killed soldiers will be killed due to mainly due to mechanized warfare mechanized means of war where very latest machines and technology are used which can cause 
tremendous damage far more damage as compared to the wars of earlier times and he also knew that due to those mechanical means of war the bodies of the soldiers will be torn to pieces a small pieces smithereens a small particles and they will be even the bodies will be buried by the heat of mortar shells mortar mortar shells right and they would remain buried there in those foreign fields foreign lands and unknown they will remain buried in those foreign fields unknown due to such methods of war suppose a soldier is killed his body gets into pieces due to mortar fire or whatever tank fire it gets into the gets mixed with the earth there where he is killed so nobody knows who has been killed who was killed so though the soldier remains buried there due to mortar shell or any mechanized means of war he or she remains unknown nobody knows where that soldier is buried or where he or she is right so the poet here thinks that english soldiers are different why they are different why does he think so once again out of a very high sense of patriotism this bhakti ki bhavna bahut unchi hai poet mein so he thinks suppose here there is a dead soldier so he says a dead british soldier means english soldier he is not ready to agree that a dead english soldier is like any other soldier because of this so he is very proud of his country he is very fond of his patriotism and that is why he he doesn't treat the dead soldiers of his country as any dead soldier he treats them as an english soldier it arises out of patriotism and pride right the soldier is thinking in this point the soldier is also thinking over his own imminent death since he is fighting at the forefront front lines of the war he thinks about his imminent death his death also may come today or tomorrow or the day after he is thinking but he is neither afraid nor he is feeling guilty do he is thinking of his imminent death that i also may die in this process of war but he is neither afraid nor guilty he doesn't feel guilty for indulging in war which causes lot of destruction right so the poem goes like this it's a sonnet uh what is a sonnet sonnet is a 14 line poem usually divided in two parts the first part of eight lines the second part of six lines and in a sonnet eight lines six lines right and sonnet is characterized by a fixed rhyme scheme what is fixed rhyme scheme the words at the end of the line each line could be similar or could be similar sounding right so if you read your poem the first line ends with me the second ends with field the third ends with b i will write here sonnet a poem of 14 lines usually first line of uh, 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 first part is of eight lines octave second part of six lines sestet and they have a fixed rhyme scheme so it goes like this first line last word me second line last word field third line b fourth concealed b concealed right four lines are over aware roam 
अवेयर आर ओ ए एम वंडर एम लेसली एयर एंड द एट्स लाइन होम सो वेन यू सी हियर मी वन राइट थर्ड लाइन बी दे आर साउंडिंग लाइक वन मी बी फील्ड कंसिल्ड अवेयर एयर रोम होम सो दीज आर द लास्ट वर्ड्स ऑफ द ऑक्टेव एंड वेन वेन यू सी दस्टेट द लास्ट वर्ड्स आर लाइक दिस अवे लेस गिवन डे गिवन डे राइट जेंटलनेस हैवन जेंटलनेस हैवन सो वंस अगेन यू सी अवे डे लेस जेंटिलनेस डे गिवन हैवन अवे डे राइट अवे डे लेस जेंटिलनेस गिवन हैवन सो देर इज ए फिक्स राइम स्कीम जेनरली ओके सो वी गो टू द पोएम द सोल्जर इफ आई शुड डाई think only this of me that there is some corner of a foreign field that is for ever england the poet say if i if i die in war you think only this of me that there is some foreign land some foreign place some foreign field where which is for ever a part of england because you know if he dies on the forefront war front he will be buried there and he is fighting in a foreign country so he said if i die you think only this of me that a part of foreign field will always remain forever england because i am an english soldier i will be buried there so it becomes forever england there shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed there shall be in that rich earth which is the rich earth where he is fighting there shall be that in that rich earth a richer dust concealed us dust mein usse bhi richer dust concealed hoga chupa hoga to rich land is the foreign land where he is fighting where he will be buried and the dust of the poet after he is dead and buried will be richer than the land in which he is buried so he is talking about the supremacy of the british soldier british soldier supremacy right a dust whom england bore shepherd made aware dust means a british soldier fighting is dead he is buried and after burial he turns into dust or due to mechanized means of war a soldier is immediately turned into dust through a tank cell or mortar cell or whatever bomb a dust whom england bore shepherd made aware england ne jisko paida kiya bada kiya shepherd usko ye roop diya abhi jo mera jo bhi roop hai wo hamare samaj ne diya hai hamare rashtra ne diya hai hamare parivar ne diya hai to he is proud of england having given him a certain shape मेड अवेयर उसको नॉलेज दिया जानकारी दी इंफॉर्मेशन दिया राइट गेव वंस हर फ्लावर्स टू लव इंग्लैंड गेव हर फ्लावर्स टू लव बिकॉज यू यूज टू मूव इन गार्डन एंड ऑल दैट हर वेज टू रोम इंग्लैंड ने उसको जब वो इंग्लैंड में था तो इंग्लैंड ने अपने रास्ते दिए उसको रोम करने के लिए रोम मीन्स वंडर एमलेसली कई बार हम लोग नहीं ऐसे ही घूमते रहते सुबह दोपहर शाम विदाउट एनी सर्टन पर्पज a body of england's breathing english air a body of england jaise a body of india so he is proud of his english birth english bringing up right a body of england's breathing english air though he is for in foreign land he is breathing english air 
he still remembers having inhaled exhaled english air washed by the rivers blessed by sons of foam he feels that he was when he was in england he was washed by the rivers of england and blessed by sons of foam of his homeland he was he felt blessed with the sons sun sign of his england country and think this heart all he will shed away he said if i die you should also think that in my heart all evil will be shed away jitni bhi buri bhavnaye hain wo nikal di gayi hongi a pulse in the eternal mind a pulse in the eternal mind eternal mind means mind which never dies usme ek dhadkan rahegi britain ki no less gives somewhere back to the thoughts by england given बोलता है कि इवन आफ्टर माय डेथ मैं इंग्लैंड को उससे कम नहीं दूंगा जितना इंग्लैंड ने मुझे दिया है राइट उससे कम नहीं दूंगा जितना इंग्लैंड ने मुझे दिया है हर साइट्स एंड साउंड्स ड्रीम्स हैप्पी एज हर डे इज रिमेंबरिंग द साइट्स एंड साउंड व्हिच ही यूज टू सी व्हेन आई वाज इन ब्रिटेन इंग्लैंड एंड लाफ्टर लर्न ऑफ फ्रेंड्स इज रिमेंबरिंग हिज फ्रेंड्स used to have lot of laughter with them and gentleness in heart set peace under an english heaven once again he is thinking of his homeland that there our hearts were at peace under an english heaven he is calling english heaven swarg uske motherland ko us swarg bata raha hai poet right so uh, we will take 2 minutes and uh, uh, the speaker of the poem is the poet himself who is a soldier he is a british soldier english soldier and the soldier is very happy he feels happy though he is in war he feels happy and he praises england a lot his motherland and it's a war poem he is talking of war two things at a single point of time dangers of war and the pride and the patriotism that he feels for his motherland the poet expresses his indebtedness to england what is indebtedness england gave him its streets to roam flowers to enjoy and under the sun they used to rivers have washed him and uh, the sons of home have blessed him right so uh, we will just wind it up uh this poem is an example of the dangers of war world war 1 and it uh, comforts the survivors how does it comfort the survivor that even if they would have died a foreign piece of land would have become forever england so it gives them some sense of comfort right and down plays the grim realities of war realities of war are grim realities destruction death injury poverty unemployment everything when this poem was written there was a practice that if a soldier is dead in foreign land his body will be cremated buried there only it won't be brought back to the homeland right so this way uh, there were vast uh, graveyards across the globe where british soldiers had fought and they died and they were buried there so the poet calls that these graveyards to consider as forever england because british soldiers are buried there so he is so proud of his country he is so patriotic right the poet had already guessed at the onset of world war 1 1914 that there will be lot of deaths lot of injuries and uh, uh, bodies of the uh, 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 soldiers will be torn to pieces many a times they will not even need to be buried because of mechanized ways of war right their body will be torn to pieces immediately on a strike by the mortar or the bomb or the shell whatever so he is very patriotic and he doesn't consider an english soldier as any soldier an english soldier is a different thing in his eyes because he is very proud of his country and very patriotic right then lastly he thinks about his own death imminent death but he is not afraid and doesn't even feel guilty 
right? I hope you found the poem easy to understand. In case of any difficulty, please do approach me on my email ID, which will be there at the thumbnail to the video. Thank you.